Welcome one and all, whoever may be watching this, this should be part 18, I think, of Tides of Numenera. Hey Sailor, what are you doing here? Um, just a quick shout out before I get into anything, uh, just to everyone who's watching this video and if you've been watching any other videos, I really appreciate your time, whether it's a couple of minutes or like the entire length of the video, thank you. Okay, let's go. So there's a couple of things on the to-do list. I feel like I should talk to these cultists. Um, but something that I really want to try now that I've got four or three people in my party. I want to go back and uh, continue with this peerless infestation. I think, not that one. Where are we? This one. Want to maybe clear that out a little bit more. Three robed figures stand here staring at the skies for ships or watching the entrance to the caravanserai for new visitors. He sees you coming and he elbows his companions. They turn and bow in unison. Revered one, their leader says. We had heard of your arrival in the city, and we thank you for this honor. We believe great things are in store for you. And this is... He peers closely at Makina. It is brethren. The new castoff travels with Makina herself, two of them together. And you wondered why I was hiding in the cave of last words. Have you seen a beautiful purple-haired woman in the area recently? I'm not sure, beloved vessel, he says, touching his chin with a thoughtful finger. Perhaps I saw a woman matching your description disembarking from an airship not long ago, but I can't say for certain. I do not know where she went, but travelers from afar often stay at Tranquility's Inn. Yeah, she definitely seems to know something, yes. but I didn't. it didn't come up with any kind of conversation option. Yeah, see, I can't, I can't ask her anything about it. Unless I could talk to one of these people. Yes, now. Uh, beside the bed is a handsome and well-made night table with a single drawer, a large open book sits atop of it. The pages of the book are made of thick vellum and it appears to be an atlas of the region. The book is open to a map that depicts the city of Sagus Cliffs, the valley of dead heroes nearby, a range of mountains to the north, labelled as the Ossifagan Range, and a circular desert farther to the east, marked as the Lost Sea. A thin strip of fabric has been placed between the open pages. A second fabric strip marks another place in the book. Um, examine the page marked by the other fabric strip. Here you see another full page map, this time representing a region called Aguacala. It seems to be located somewhere to the northwest of Sagus Cliffs, and it's defined by a massive ring of mountains labelled as the Clock of Kala. The mountain range is so perfectly round that it was almost certainly engineered by artificial means in the distant past. Several cities and towns dot the landscape, but the largest and most prominent is named Sada Imiju. After a few moments, you turn back to the map of the Sagus Cliffs region. Uh, I don't know, names of nearby settlements? Besides Sagus Cliffs, you only see a few other cities and towns. In the center of the circular desert are a large blue dot labeled the Oasis of Murad Julius, and a small dot immediately next to it, Jeboa. On the far side of the desert is another city, Haref. 
On one end of the Valley of Dead Heroes is a dot labelled the Necropolis. It's unclear whether this is a settlement or just a site of interest. The book doesn't seem new, its pages are worn from frequent use, but that's all you can discern. It might be anywhere from 10 to 50 years old. No dates are stamped on any of the pages. The table is finely made and has a single drawer. The drawer appears to be locked, but you can hear something rattling around inside. The noise is faint but constant, as if the object were alive. I guess I'll attempt to pick the lock. Maybe I'll see if she can do it, because she's a thief. After a bit of effort, you hear a satisfying click, and the drawer opens soundlessly. I'll remember that. Ooh. Hold on, I just missed something. The floating comb and the purple hair match Omahadron's description of Persea. It seems likely that she stayed in this very room, and probably not long ago. Hold on, is there a way to pull up past conversations? I don't think so because it's so it totally I don't know if I was maybe pressing enter or I I don't know what happened but it kind of just skipped a whole section. Doesn't look like I can go back. Okay, cool. So she did stay here. You said you hadn't seen Persea, but I found this comb in one of your rooms. The hair in it is purple just like hers. She takes the comb and examines it, frowning. Yes, I lied to Omadon, and I do not regret it, though I know you will judge me for it. Perhaps you'll understand when I tell you Persea's story. I'll remember that. Omadon may believe her to be his one true love, but it is obsession, not love, and it has made a monster of him. She sighs. From what Persea told me, he found her corpse in a sepulture in the Valley of Dead Heroes, perfectly preserved by ancient science, and fell in love with her beauty. His foolishness might have ended there, except that Omadon had ancient science of his own, and he used it to wake her from death. He grunts and speaks in your ear. A fool with the power of a god. You wouldn't know anything about that sort of thing, would you, Cast Off? He seemed to think this unasked for resurrection would make him a hero in her eyes and that she would fall instantly in love with him, but she was unnerved by his fervor. She explained that she did not share his feelings. He wouldn't listen. He saw her disgust as a passing madness. Persea has fled from him ever since, but he is relentless. She looks up. Do you see now why I helped her? Why I lied to him and to you? Obsession is oft mistaken for love, and the beloved is simply a prize to be won. He's hounding the poor girl, he mutters in your ear. She wants nothing to do with him, shameful behavior, and that's me saying it. Yes, love can't be won through obligation, it must be given freely. She breathes a sigh of relief. I'm glad to hear you say that. What do you intend to do now? Can you put Omadon into a trance? It would give Persea more time to escape. Take all my intelligence. I'll remember that. She hesitates. It seems a dishonorable thing to do, but he is a dishonorable man, so perhaps he should be paid in kind. She nods. Very well, send him to me and I will do it. I can make him a guest at my inn for as long as need be. Cool. I was wondering, he did seem like super obsessed with her. On it. 
And I know she technically could be mad, and this is all a ploy, but still, something didn't seem quite right. Omadon brightens as he sees you. Hello again, friend. Any news of Persea? Have you seen her? Go and talk to Tranquility. She regrets lying to you and wants to apologize. She'll tell you the truth this time. I'll remember that. I knew she was lying. Thank you, friend. I'll go see her now. And if she thinks she's getting away with a mere apology, she's more of a fool than she looks. I think that was the right thing to do. <laughs> Nice, okay, so I'm assuming that's him in his trance right there. All right. Cool, I just did a thing. Um, let's head out. I don't think yes, I need now. to rest just yet. Ooh, I think this will take me to the government area. Interesting, I never even saw this before. That confuses me. Hold on, I just want to check out what's in this corner. Squat all. Okay, cool. Just, you know, you need to check sometimes. Ready. All right, let's I'm ready. get this done, or at least some of it done. <laughs> ready. Ooh, why is it a crisis straight away? Who's seen me? I don't know who I'm fighting. Uh, okay, can we buff ourselves? Okay, fire out. It's one of these things. Oh, I should have moved further back. Um, okay, I don't want to necessarily attract others to us, so let's just back on up. Um, or at least bring this dude to us, maybe? Out of range. Okay, let's just go back. I know this is not going to be the most exciting combat in the world. Let's go. Oh, shivers! No, I didn't mean to leave him there. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um. If he can hook the creature, I'm still stinking out of range. Um, oh, really? Oh, whatever. And a miss. Yeah, I know how my characters work. I barely heard it. Try something else. Nah, you did good, my dude. Uh, okay, can you... No, you can't. You're out of range. Oh, far out. I'm there. In the shadows. Uh, 
Uh, let's go energy, maybe. Oh, okay, but we might have to attack first. Okay. Sorry, just bear with me as I figure out all these details. Nope. Oh, okay, good. Hit him once, please. Nice. <laughs> Don't think we'll need Makina after this. I barely heard it. Try something else. I take it back, maybe we will. Still don't think she can get him. Oh no, maybe she can. Okay, go. They call me the White Death for a reason. Nice. Okay, uh, the question though is where the heck do we need to go? Oh, it looks like there's a thing here. Okay, maybe we need to get in here. I wonder if we can lure one of them out. How does that work in this game? Go. The issue is we've got these guys down here. So it might just be easier to run in. I don't feel great about fighting two of them at once, but let's go for it. want to bring anyone to us just yet. I gave him something. Oh, we can't use it? Okay, never mind. Oh, okay, we can't. Okay, whatever. Well, hold on, where are you going? ready for this beautiful oh actually maybe because she would just miss let's be real If I can move Tibia, which I can't do until the next round, can we just shut the door on this second one? On it. Yeah, that wasn't fantastic, was it? That was brilliant, though. Good job. I should have got her to flank at first. What was I thinking? Nah, too late now.
Cool, that was a crit too. Nicely done. Uh, okay, maybe I'll heal myself. I can breathe again. Yep, you've always been able to breathe. It's okay. Uh, and I think we'll call that a day. Oh, okay, it's an area of effect. Oh, well. Okay, maybe just move a bit closer in case it wants to shoot you back a bit. I can barely scratch this thing. Probably should have got her to hide. No, where are you going? No, why are you making me do weird things? Okay, that wasn't quite flanked, was it? Um, what do you think of this? Cool. course. Uh, move away. Okay, so we need to keep it relatively close to Makina. Don't know if that helps the situation. <laughs> hey, three points is three points. What else do we have? It's like an AOE thing. Ooh, heals three points of speed. Okay, I can't really do... Oh, hold on. saying that I've got the hang of this combat, but I'm getting there. At least I want to think I'm getting there. <laughs> All right. The twinkling moats swell around and enter your ears in the same manner as the last column. It is likely the same method of clearing the peerless will work here. Initiating infectious intelligence can tamer, a pleasant voice begins, crackle. I am peerless, it bellows. You are not. There is no greater offense. You place your hand on the wave pattern and hum the sequence of notes you used before. The red light flushes from the column and the voice rings inside your head. Peerless intelligence, atomized and erased. All minds within this circuit have been returned to their default personalities. Thank you, I am feeling much refreshed. Ah uh, yes, please heal me, thank you. Okay, so it looks like these guys here are no longer enemies. So that's fantastic. So then I'm assuming the next one would have to be around here somewhere, would it not? I wonder if I had a sort of continued on past these guys and got to here. I'll handle it. If we wouldn't have had to have worried so much about the combat sitch. Uh this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> 